In this video, we are going to create an Express.js server for performing standard CRUD operations. So we'll basically create a bunch of API endpoints for a contact management application. Let me show you how the actual output is going to be. And then we can take a look at the technologies that we'll use and finally start working on the code. Okay, so we have VS Code open right here. The server is already running. So what we can do is we can directly go ahead and start hitting the API endpoints to see what kind of response we get. The first endpoint that we have is this one that's localhost 3000 slash contacts. This is a get HTTP method or a get endpoint which would give us the details of all the contacts currently available in our system. So if I go ahead and send this, then you see we get two different contacts. These are the details that I currently have in the application. If we copy one of these IDs, then we can also take a look at an individual detail as well. So there's another endpoint which is contact slash ID. If I send this, then you will see this returns an individual contact with all the details about just that one contact. The next endpoint that we have is a post endpoint, which is for inserting or adding a new contact. We'll change the method to post here. By the way, if you're wondering what this extension is or what I'm using right now, this extension is called Thunder Client. It's a very handy extension for VS Code so that we can test all our API endpoints within VS Code itself. I have a video talking about seven must have VS Code extensions. You can find it up here. I'll also put the link in the description box as well. So now let's go ahead to the post route. For adding a new contact, we have to provide the contact details as a JSON object in the body. So again, I have checked the body part here and then I've entered the JSON data. I've just copy pasted it for now. Let us change it to something else. So let's just call this Jacob Doe, for example, and the email can change to jacob at example.com. And then let me just add a random number, something like this. The address can remain the same. Now I'm going to go ahead and send this and this should store the data for us. You can see a new record has been inserted. We get a status 201 created. If we go back to our get endpoint right now, then we should be able to see three records now, as you can see. So this Jacob contact that we've just inserted is also now available and it is being returned by our server. Similarly, we also have update and delete endpoints. So if we specify a particular contact ID, let us say that we want to change the address right, for Jacob's contact. So let's just change it to 456 Main Street. I can send this and you can see the address gets updated. Again, if we quickly fetch the data back, then we can see for Jacob, the address is now updated. Finally, if you want to delete this, we can also just hit the delete endpoint by providing the contact ID. So I can send this and again, this is now deleted. If I go back to the get endpoint now, we should not find anything. You can see it says contact not found. And if I replace this ID or remove this ID, then we are back to getting the two default values which we got initially. So effectively we have five different endpoints. The first one for fetching all contacts, the second one for fetching individual contact details, then updating, deleting and insertion. And so we have five API endpoints that we're looking to create. All right, now that we've understood what we're trying to build, let's take a quick look at the technologies that we require in order to build this application. The very first thing that we need here is Express.js. So this is going to be the backend that we're going to use. And again, Express.js is basically a node package or an NPM package, that's node package manager. So you need to have Node.js installed on your system in order to build Express.js applications. What Express lets us do is create a custom server and then using that server, what we're going to do is to create a bunch of API endpoints. API stands for Application Programming Interface. It is basically a mechanism for different web applications to talk to each other. In this particular context, which is for our contact management application, we are going to create a few different endpoints that let us perform all the standard CRUD operations. That's create, read, update, and delete. Now that we have an understanding of the technologies that we're looking at, let's go ahead and start working on the code. Okay, so we are back to VS Code and what I have here right now is an empty folder that I've just opened in VS Code. So again, as you can see, this is contact management Express.js. That's the name of the folder that I have given and there is nothing in the folder right now. 
the very first thing that we have to do to create an express server is to run the npm init command or basically create the package.json file so let's head over to the terminal and here the command is npm init right there's also a shorthand for this which is npm init hyphen y but let me actually walk you through all the options that show up so when we run npm init it will walk us through a couple of different steps which eventually results in the creation of a package.json file and from there we can work on the rest of the application so the very first thing is it asks us for the package name and by default it takes the folder name as the package name i am happy with it so i can just press the enter key then we have to specify the version number if we have any i'm going to set the default so again press the enter key then description so we can just put the description in contact management application let's move to the next step so then we have entry point now there are two conventions here some people use index.js some people use server.js it is up to us so i'm going to see to the default value that is index.js again hit enter to go to the next step we are not working on any testing of the application right now so i leave the test command blank so again hit enter then git repository in case you have a git repository or a github repository you can connect it over here we don't have one right now so i'll just hit enter then if there are any keywords that you want to put in you can mention those here again i'll skip this finally the name of the author so i'm going to type my name in you can also put your name over there and hit enter then we leave the license to the default value which is isc and hit enter as soon as we do this you can see a package.json file gets created and we also see the output over here as well right? so it asks us a final confirmation is this okay as soon as we say yes it creates the file for us so this is the longer process that we have where we can actually enter a couple of custom values if we want to there's also a shortcut available for this so if i just delete the whole thing and let's redo this with the shortcut the shortcut is npm init hyphen y what this will do is this will automatically take all the default values in and create the file for us in a single step so we don't have to go through that entire walkthrough and do it step by step it gets it done all together now the package.json is created let's close off the terminal for a while we can then come back and add certain things to it if we want for example we can change the description to something if we want to we can change the file name we can change pretty much everything so i'll just add the author name here and i'll replace the test script with the start script and this is going to be node index.js so this is my start script and now the next step is to create this file which is index.js so i'm going to create it quickly it's an empty file right now and before we start writing any code let's quickly install all the packages that we require so for this particular application we need three packages so that's npm install npm i for short the first package that we need obviously is express the next package that we need is body parser this will help us work with the json data which we receive and send at request and response everything is working based on json for which we need body parser and finally we'll use a package called uuid this package will help us create a random user id it's a very interesting package we'll talk more about this really soon so these are the three things that we need i'm going to hit enter and these packages are now installed in our application now we can go ahead and use them so let's quickly set this up so let's set up the bare bone structure first so const express equal to require express then we have to use the body parser so again we can say require body parser right then we can specify a port so which port do we want the application to run on or the server to run on the default value typically is 3000 but let's say that you have a react based front end for example which is using the port 3000 then you can change the port number to 3001 2, 3, etc all of that will work fine also if you're looking for a react mini project i have another video on that as well again you can find it right here at the top i'll also put the link in the description box you can check that out for react based mini project as well all right the next thing that we have to do is to create the application so that's const app is equal to and we'll call the express constructor so this is going to construct or create the application for us we'll also quickly use our uuid package so that's uuid equal to and then we can say require uuid the syntax here is a little different we actually have to specify the version that we want so we can say v4 
and then UUID 4. This is what we are looking at. So unlike the normal require, here we have to be a little more specific about which version of this package do we want. There are different versions. You can explore them as well. V4 and V5 are the most common. But for our use case, V4 will suffice. Then you have the port number and then the app. Okay, now that the application is created, we can go ahead and start it. To start this, we have to use the listen method, right? So that's app.listen. Here we have to first specify the port and then a callback. This callback will be called whenever the application starts running. So we typically perform all our database connectivity and all of those tasks in this callback. But right now, what we can do is we can just put a console.log and I can just mention server is running and then on we can specify the link. So that's HTTP colon slash slash localhost followed by the port number. So for this, we can use the dollar syntax like so. So remember this port is only going to work if we use these quotes right, which are available left of the one key or above the tab key. These are not standard single or double quotes. They are special quotes, right? So on the keyboard, they are either above the tab key or the left of one key. If we put those only then this will work. If I change it to double quotes or single quotes instead, then this dynamic value will not work. Right? So it's important to use the right brackets or right quotation mark over here. Done. I can also set the view to word wrap so we can see everything properly in the code. Now the next thing that we should enable our application to do is to use the body parser in order to work with the JSON data. So for this, after we start our application, we have to put app.use and then we can specify body parser dot JSON. Now with this body parser inclusion or by using body parser, our application will be able to work with JSON data, both receiving it and sending it. Done. So this is the bare bones code that we need. Now, before we start working on the actual functionality, let us go ahead and create all the endpoints for now. So the first thing that we have is get all contacts. This will be app.get and this will be the home route itself. And then we have request response and the corresponding callback. Right? So this method will go. I leave it empty for now and just like this let's create all endpoints that we need so then we have get individual contact details right and here again i can copy this because this is also going to be a get route so this is on slash contacts and then this one will be slash contacts with an id so if you have to read something from the user then we say colon id this will make it a parameter a url parameter right? then we can get it from the request so it becomes a parameter that the user can provide as a part of the URL itself. Done. Next we have insert. So let's call it create a new contact or add a new contact. Again, you can call it whatever is appropriate. It's just a comment. Then app.post. This will again be on the home route itself. So that can still be contacts. And over here, we also have again request and response followed by the callback. Done. So this is going to be the method or the endpoint which will allow us to create a new contact. Then we have update. So that's update a contact. This will be app.put. Now remember we have two update methods in HTTP, the put as well as the patch. Put is typically used to replace existing data and patch is used to modify existing data. So in this case, we have to provide the entire data again. So that way we can replace all the details in one go. Done. Then finally we have deletion. So let's copy this, paste it here. It's going to be delete a contact right? and then this will change to app.delete. For updation as well as for deletion, we require the contact ID. So I've added that in the parameter list now. Let's take a quick look at everything that we have done so far and then we can start working on the actual logic. The very first thing is we are requiring everything that we need. Right? So we require express, then body parser, then UUID. Then we have set a port. Then we are creating the application using express. So this is the constructor for that. Then we are using body parser to let our app use or work with JSON data. Next up, we have created all the different endpoints. So we have five endpoints in total. The first one is to get all contacts. Then for each individual contact details, then creating a new one, updating a contact and deleting it. So we have five endpoints. We'll work on the logic in just a minute. Finally, we have app.listen. So our server should now start on this port and we should be able to listen at all of these endpoints. Great. Let's quickly test this out first and then we can start working on the logic. So I'll just test one endpoint 
let's just put here response.json and let's put a message saying server is running for example right? just a simple message and this needs to be in an object format because it's a json data now let's go ahead and start it so that's terminal new terminal and the command is npm start as soon as we do this our server should start and you can see it says port is already in use right so again if you have a front end running or another server running you might encounter this issue for which you can just go ahead and change the port number perfect let me go ahead and start it now and you can see this time it says server is running on localhost 3001 since this is an express based setup and we are working only with json data we will not be able to see anything on the browser so if you open this up in the browser it will not show us anything so again if you just see the browser here it just gives us a message saying cannot get and because again we don't have any front end associated with this however if we open this up in thunder client then we should be able to work with it so let me just type that in so that's http localhost 3001 okay, let's minimize the terminal and send this request as soon as we send this you can see we get server is running which is exactly what we have returned on this route this means our server setup is fine and now we can go ahead and start working on the logic okay now that we have tested the application let us start implementing the functionality from the get route itself so for this we are going to need some dummy data which i already have with me so i've just pasted that in so the array is called contacts and it has two objects with two default contacts whatever manipulations modifications updation deletion everything that we do we'll do it directly within this array itself now typically this will come from a database but since in this video we are focusing only on express right i'm going to just use some local data let me know in the comments below if you want me to create a video on mongodb mini project as well but for now let's focus on this part Another thing that I've quickly realized is that this is actually UUID v4 and not UUID 4. So let me quickly modify that as well. Great. Now let's work on the logic. So the very first thing is very simple. We just have to return the entire array here. So this is it for our get route. We have just returned everything that we have in terms of contacts. Now this is a shortcut. Typically you would put something like this. And so contacts is the key and then contacts is the value. But if the key and the value are the same, we can just mention it once. So this way, the same key value combination will be used. So again, it's a quick shortcut to get things done faster. Then let's move to the next part. This is where we'll have to give a little more thought because here the first step that we have to do is to read the ID from the user then figure out if that contact is actually available in the array or not. And then if the contact is available, we return those details. Otherwise, if the contact is not available, we just throw a message saying contact not found. So let's do this step by step. The very first step is to read the ID from the user. So that's going to be request dot params dot ID. So this is how we can access all the parameters coming in from the request request dot params. And then we specify the parameter over here. This ID will match the value in the URL. Done. We have the ID now. Next up, we want to find if the contact with this ID is actually available in our data. So for this, we can say let contact is equal to contacts dot find. So we can use the find function here. And then over here, we will have to specify what do we want to check. So basically for each contact, what we want to check is that the contact dot ID, which is in the data should match the ID coming from the URL. So this is the comparison logic. We are saying in the contacts array for each contact check if the contact ID is equal to the ID coming from the user. If it is equal then it is being stored in this object which is contact. Now if the contact is not available then it will be null. So we check if not contact. This would mean the contact is not available. So here we can say response.json. We can put a message saying contact not found. So this is it and otherwise if the contact does exist then we can go ahead and we can return it so we can say response.json and then again we can say contact that's it this should return that individual contact details if they are found let's quickly test it out as well so again we'll have to restart our server unlike react there is no auto reload happening in case of express we have to manually go ahead and restart it after we make a change Again, there is a package available for this called Nodemon, which we'll talk about in another video probably. 
but that automatically restarts express servers as well you can check it out the package is called nodemon n o d e m o n but for now i'm going to start a server and then let's go back to thunder client and try this out let's open the same request let's run this one so we should get all contacts so the first bit is working fine the structure is a little different however we are not returning the entire thing directly instead it returning an array within the object which is fine we can always fix this then we can look for an individual contact so let me copy that id and i'm going to paste that in and send it and you can see this is found so as soon as the contact is found we get it if i just remove or modify the id then we get a message saying contact not found okay so this is working exactly as we want it to great let's move to the next part and work on the creation of the contact now now for the creation bit what we need to do first of all is to read all the details coming from the request right so we can store them individually in different variables and again we can write them one by one or we can use the destructuring syntax so what all do we have well we have name email phone and address these are the four values that we have id is of course something that we will generate on our own and we can then say request dot body this is a shorthand for creating four variables you can also do this one by one you can say let name is equal to request dot body dot name for instance and then do the same thing for all four values as well but obviously this takes a lot longer and this is a much better way to do it now that we have the details with us the next step is to generate the id so we can say let new id or id is equal to uuid v4 so we just have to call this constructor and it will automatically generate a random id for us then we have to create a new contact with these details so we can say let new contact is equal to this will be an object and it will contain all of these things so id and then the other four values so that's id name email phone and address finally what we can do is we can push this into the array so we can say contact dot push new contact so new contact and done and after this we can just respond so we can just put a status first of all so we can set the status to 201 which stands for created and then put json a message saying contact created either this or if you remember our output what we were doing is we were actually responding with the new contact details so we can specify it this way similarly what we can also do is we can remove these curly brackets from contact and contacts as well remember we were getting that complicated nested structure which we don't really want so since contacts is also an object and contact is also an object we can directly return it that way perfect this is it now another thing that we can also quickly set is the status 404 over here for not found this is also something that we can do and these are just additional things you can also skip them but for a proper application all of these things need to be in place done so this is our creation bit next up let us start working on the update logic and then we can test the whole thing out together so now in the update case what we need to do are a couple of things first of all again we need to read all the details from the user so we can just copy the same line from there but instead of creating a custom id or a random id we want to get the id from the parameter so this will be request dot params dot id then we have to check if this contact is available or not but we don't want the details of the contact so we can still use the find method but we can modify it to find index so what this will do is this will actually give us an index at which number or at which index in the contacts array is this contact available so we can perform a similar check on the index as well so if the index is minus 1 then it would mean the value is not found so we can replace the condition by saying if index is equal to minus 1 then we can return with this response right so that will be the response status and we can put a similar return over here as well so this is done and then what we can do is if the contact is found then we can modify it so we can say contact of index equal to and then we can just pass in all the new values to the existing id along with all of these new details so this will replace the contact details there and finally we can respond with the modified contact so that will again be contact of index done this is a logic for updation let's quickly move to deletion next now for deletion most of this logic is going to exactly be the same so we still have to get the id find the contact return if it does not exist 
So all of that will still remain the same. Right? So I've just copied it and pasted it here. Then what we have to do is if the contact is found, then what we have to do is we have to go ahead and delete it. So let's store that value so we can return it. So we can say const deleted contact equal to contacts dot splice. So we can use the splice method for this. And this can be index comma one from the current location where the contact is remove one value. This is what this is telling us. Finally, we can return the spliced contact. So we can say response.json deleted contact. Done. This is a deletion logic. So everything looks good now. Let us go ahead and test it out as well. So first up, let's start our server. So that's terminal, new terminal. And then let's go for npm start. So this should start our server. Perfect. Now let's head over to this one and start running the get method first. So this is the URL. Let's run this and we get the get method. We have already tested it. It is working fine, but still I will double check it for individual contact as well. This time you'll notice the complicated structure is gone and we get the details directly within the array itself. Let's change this to post now and try to create a new contact. So I'll copy these details, go to the body and then put the data over there. So let's go ahead and make sure it is a valid JSON string. Let's put the name as Jacob. So that's Jacob and let's put the number as well. I leave the address for now. We'll update it later. So send it done. So this is status 201 created. Perfect. If we try to find this contact or go back to our get for all contacts, we should now get Jacob's details as well. Then let's try to update that value. So let's go to put. Let me copy the ID from here. Let's put that in and let's change the address. So I'll go for 456, send it. And this is also working fine. The updation is done. Let's double check. Let's change it to get now. And you can see we get the updated data back. Finally, let's try to delete it. We already have the ID in the URL. Let's send it and it is deleted. Now this gives us the contact details, which was deleted just now. Now, if you go back to the get, it will be not found. You can see contact not found. And if you see all contacts, then we should only get the two default values again. So this means everything that we have created here is working perfectly fine. Let me give you a quick walkthrough of this again. So the first thing that we're doing here is to require everything that we need. This UUID like we have used is a very special package. It automatically generates the ID for us. Very simple. We just have to put UUID and that's it. We do have a couple of options as well. If you want to specify them, you can explore the documentation for more. And then we have created all the routes. So in get, we are simply returning the entire array as it is. Then we have the individual contact details bit where we are reading the request ID or the contact ID from the user. Then we're trying to find it. If we find it, we return that. Otherwise we throw an error saying contact not found. So this is a 404 status. Then we are creating a new contact. So this is post, right? And then we have created a put for updation. Again, here we are trying to find the index at which the contact is available. And then based on that, we are performing the rest of the logic. Finally, we have created the delete route, which is very similar to index, but instead of updating values, we are using splice to delete that contact. And then of course we have our app.listen, which makes the entire thing run. All right, so in this video, we have taken a look at how to create an Express.js server to perform standard CRUD operations by providing a bunch of different API endpoints to the user. If you found this video useful, do like the video and subscribe to the channel for more. Let me know in the comments what is the next project that you would want me to build or the next technology that I should cover. Thank you so much for stopping by. I'll see you in the next one.